In this video, I wanted to go over whether it's time to sell the Rolex Daytona in 2022. First, I'm gonna go over my hands-on impression of the watch. Then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the black one and the white one and how I compare the two. And then we're gonna get on to whether it's a good idea to sell. Why is the Daytona so very desirable? I think the white dial Daytona is extremely desirable because of the way it looks. The white with the contrast of the black rings in the subdials and the black bezel. It's, it's a really nice contrasty watch and it's very noticeable. The other thing is, apart from it just being identifiable from kind of a distance, it's also the perfect dimensions in a chronograph. I don't think I've experienced a better dimension chronograph, especially the way it sits on the wrist. It's really second to none when it comes to, well, taking a look at all the other automatic chronographs you can see, because the thickness at 12.5 millimeters is actually fairly decent for a chronograph, because chronographs typically the modules run a little bit thicker, the movements themselves. But 12.5 is actually good even for a regular diver. So in comparison, this is something that slides under the cuff quite easily. Now the case diameter of 40 millimeters, this is the ideal size for most people. This fits the broadest genre of people because it really does work on so many wrists. Now the lug to lug is about 46.5 millimeters. And so it does make the watch more wearable on smaller wrists. But the thing is, it's also 40 millimeters in diameter, which helps the size, overall size of it on the wrist. So it's just very versatile in its ability to fit and encompass so many different wrists and still look really nice. A lot of watches can fit a lot of wrists, but it, it, they don't always look and feel as perfect as you'd want them to. The Panda configuration itself is very recognizable from a distance you can kind of tell especially because of that rather thick ceramic bezel it's quite recognizable at least you'd assume something in that configuration is a daytona perhaps it's a homage or maybe it's a zenith but the first thing you think is rolex daytona now to compare the black and the white i think the black is popular because of the white i think the daytona is so exceedingly popular because of the white dial and how well that's done and how easily you can recognize one of those out in the wild. And the black dial Daytona, it's not all that easy to figure out what watch that is from a distance, but the fact that is it's the same watch, that's why they're also almost equally popular. The white one is really the one that leads the market and leads the charge and even helps the black one get up there. Now, apart from the watch itself, the, the face and the case being really well dimensioned, the bracelet is also very close to perfect because it's the tried and tested oyster bracelet that's on so many watches. And I think Rolex is one of the companies that really focuses on their bracelets as much as they do the case of the watch. Most watch brands in, in this price range are kind of lacking in the bracelet department. And this oyster style bracelet, it's very popular. It's kind of flashy with the polished center links. That's one of the identifying features of this variation of the oyster bracelet. And the other thing is, the comfort it feels solid yet not too heavy and the clasp the milk clasp is fantastic to operate and all of it is so well constructed that it just leaves you with a better experience and that's one of the reasons why people like rolex because it's so easy to use it's easy to wear and it's just perfect at what it does it's not eccentric it's not flashy it doesn't give you something very newly exciting but it does the job extremely well and most people are satisfied with that. So now onto the outlook and whether it's time to sell. Now, why am I saying is it time to sell when it's the most popular watch on the market and it's at 45, 46, 47,000 US dollars on the gray market, secondary market at the moment? Why would you sell something that appreciates so much? Well, I think because when you're getting close to 50,000 US dollars, there is so much more to experience in the watch world, especially in higher end horology, you can get better watches, not just subjectively better, but objectively better watches also. You can get so many Vacherons in that, in that range. You could get the plain 56, you could get a complicated one, a calendar 56, and you can even get the 41 millimeter overseas blue dial right now. It will soon no longer be under 50K, but right now I think you can still get one around 50,000 US dollars. And to me, that represents so much more value than a Daytona, especially when you consider the movement of the watch, the history, the heritage, 
and the way it looks, I think the VC is, is a stunning watch and I would pick that any day over the Daytona given even, even a similar price range. There are other companies to look, look at. There's so many other companies other than Rolex, especially watches that retail higher than the Daytona that sell for less. And there's a lot more complications you can get to experience. There's a lot more variety. This is just a chronograph, well executed chronograph, and it's an automatic movement. There isn't too much to the watch. There's just a lot to the hype. So for that reason, I'd say you'd have to first consider if you'd like any other watch under 50,000 US dollars, or you think something is cool in that range, that's an easy reason to sell this and get something else while you can. So for example, with the VC 4500V blue dial, you can still get that for a little bit more than a Daytona or just at the, at the top end of the market. And I think you won't be able to do that for very long. So I would personally do that. I would make, I would make that trade in a heartbeat. And if you're not interested in VC, there's just a plethora of watches under 50K. And I'm sure something is more interesting to you than a plain chronograph. And the second consideration is, did you buy it at retail? If you bought it at retail, then it might be a little bit more special to you. Perhaps it makes sense to keep it. Maybe it's the watch that, maybe it's the only watch that you wanted and, and you actually wear it. Then sure, don't sell it. But if you bought it at a great market value or anywhere above retail and you've already made a considerable margin, then why not get into something you like even more? Obviously this doesn't apply to those people that don't like any other brand other than Rolex. There's a lot of people like that, that only like Rolex and will only get Rolex. Sure, those people, well, can't really say anything to that, but if you're interested in exploring other brands, then I would just sell it. The third consideration is, is it your most exciting watch or is it your most exciting investment? So there are these two aspects to most popular steel Rolex watches because they are both exciting to some and investments to I think more people than people that are truly excited about that particular model. Now, if it's your most exciting investment, I do think there are other watches that could appreciate a little bit more. If, if you're really into watches, you'd be able to find that and move into that and experience something new and wear that. But if it's your most exciting watch, that's kind of surprising to me in that 50K range because I think there's a lot more exciting models. So either you've already explored everything and you're sure that this is the one for you, then of course there's no point talking about the values or the price or what the market's at because that's irrelevant to you. But if it's actually the most exciting watch in your collection in terms of the horological aspects of it or the complication of the movement, then there's a lot more under 50K that you could get into. So overall, will the Daytona continue to appreciate? Very much likely, that's what it's done. That's what it's likely to do in 2022, perhaps 50, over 50K by the end of the year, or even sooner than that. So it's really a decision on whether you want, you really want this safety net of the investment aspect of it, or whether it's the perfect watch for you and you don't care about anything else, or whether you've just had it because it's popular and because of the hype. If it's that reason, then I would personally consider getting into something else. That's pretty much it, guys. I want to know what you think about this topic. This watch is so extremely hyped and popular, especially this year. So I want to know what you would do and what you are doing if you have the piece. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Cheers.